Hello, Adobe Live. Welcome to the stream. I'm Julian. I'm here joined with Andrea Marquez. I'm broadcasting Hi, from <laughs> I'm broadcasting <laughs> from uh, San Francisco, California. And Andrea, where are you where are you joining us from? I'm in Miami. And so today we are going to continue our uh, discussion day two of the stream with Andrea. We're going to be uh, building upon this creative app. And uh, hello, everybody in the stream that's joining us. Uh, we got Scott, we got uh, Cody Bear, anybody else that wants to jump in and, and just chat with us. We're, we're going to be here talking about uh, ex advanced prototyping and how those translate from low fidelity wireframes. Uh, Andrea is going to give us a breakdown of what we did yesterday. Uh, but before we do that, um, let me uh, talk about the schedule and we got coming up for today and what you've already reviewed earlier today. Uh, so uh, definitely take a look at um, what we have going on in uh, uh, up next, we have, uh, hold on, I lost the screen. Uh, we, ha we have a lot of things planned for today, uh, but tomorrow uh, is going to be a new stream. Um, and I can't see my screen. Hold on one second. Okay. There we go. All right, I'm back. So uh, how to animate scenes at 730. We started early um, and we're all the way up until 2 p.m. And that's with uh, Andrea Epi it presented us with the daily creative challenge. Okay, that's coming up next. At 2.30, we have the doodle therapy. So make sure to stay tuned for doodle therapy and that's a way that you can uh, express yourself and uh, give yourself a little bit of freedom to uh, dive into creating, st relieving stress by creating uh, really cool doodles. Um, so we also have uh, our creative challenge that is on my screen. And that's something that I wanted to just review and give you guys a, a heads up on what's to come. Uh, so the daily creative challenge uh, is today's slider challenge. So uh, designing selection interface for a smoothie machine. So I would highly recommend checking that one out because being able to use sliders to control different elements on your screen is a really cool advanced prototyping feature. Uh, and that's going to be something that you could uh, get started or watch the video. And if you've never done a, a creative challenge, I, I highly encourage you to do it. Uh, Andrea has done it. I've done it. Uh, and once you do that, you have all these cool source files and you have access to uh, this really amazing community on Discord. So uh, by joining you, you automatically be included into this uh, wonderful place where you can get feedback, uh, submit projects, meet people. Uh, and I'm there as a mentor, so giving feedback as well. So please join the Creative Challenge and uh, take part in something really special. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, our Adobe Creative Residency uh, Community Fund. So if you are a creative uh, who has um, or know somebody that has been impacted by COVID um, and you want to show support for yourself or the community, um, take a look at this page and uh, and take part. It's really cool. Uh, it's a way for you to uh, fund your projects and uh, join a community of creatives who are uh, doing great things out there. So highly encourage you to check that out. So without further ado, uh, I want to uh, swing it over to Andrea and talk about how uh, we're going to make this app come to life. So let's let's do it and maybe catch people up with what you were doing yesterday. Yes. So hi, everyone. Um, it's nice to be here again. Um, this is the second day. And yesterday, we were designing uh, some screens. Mm -hmm. uh, we finalized uh, almost every, every screen, but we're good to go and, and have some animations today. And let me show you guys, uh, in case you missed it, uh, a little bit of my design system. So I chose these colors because I am, um, on my Instagram, it's kind of, it's kind of like uh, the, the, the color palette that I, that I choose to, to work with every, every post or prototype design or mental reality post that I do. Uh, so I try to, to mix uh, those colors here again. 
Uh, for my phone, I use the phone app. I use uh, San Francisco. I'm obsessed with that phone. It's just perfect. And for the gallery of um, this app that we have like a, a font uh, gallery, I use the um, Spark uh, pack. You can find it on Adobe Fonts. There, there is a really good mix of fonts there. They're really fun. And then um, my icons and elements. The icons, I, I got it from this plugin, I'll show you here is uh, icons for design. All of them, I, I grab it from there. And, and those are, cool. are those free, right? Yes, and they're for free. And the amazing part is like you have like different packages. So each time that you, uh, if you if you pick a package, uh, you, you can um, make sure that all your icons are going to be consistent, the same um, thickness or, or, or the same, uh, uh, style, so that's something like really important in where you when you are designing an app that all your your icons um, are consistent. And um, there are some elements that I put together over here, like this um, uh, transparency uh, layer, and it's composed composed by just little boxes. Squares. Yes, and. Um, and see, we have some animojis for my avatars, uh, colors. These are the shapes that we um, use for uh, our illustrations. And yeah. here you can see the illustrations already uh, in the composition. And over here, you can see my components, uh, the part of the, the gallery for the actual app, the, the font part layers uh, motion and how the 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 motion itself is um showcased when you select a scale rotation position transparency yeah and so uh, talking about like design systems a little more um like what what do you um feel like is for you like the, the main reason why you like have a design system uh, for people that might not know about like the benefits of design systems and, and what they're used for, like how do you use them at your in your work? Sometimes uh, you feel that you're spending too much time, like preparing these assets, but actually are time saver. Yeah. Um, and also it, it it allows you like to prepare your components uh, and your master components. So each time that you need to modify, maybe because you are not agree uh, or, or you need to change the color or, or, the, or the, the, the label itself, you can go to your, your design system and change it there and it will like replace in all the screens. So you're yeah. saving time, you don't need to go each screen uh, one by one, just replacing your content, same with the colors. Um, also, for this one, like since we were doing illustrations, um, it was really important to create uh, the, the elements first and have it just ready to go and, 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 and after that play with them and make this, this cool animations. For the, the, for this part, actually it was like really um, important to do it because maybe I, I, I wasn't sure about the, the font, so Mm -hmm. and, and we have a lot of uh, little boxes so if i start like changing and then with uh with um replacing into the to the screens it was going to be a mission and sometimes you, you can have a an error there so um it's actually um something that that i i recommend i yeah. I, I didn't use i sometimes um we are in a kind of like a hurry or something, but it will like save you a lot of time and, right. and you, you, your work will be, uh, you, you will perform better like your, your job. Yeah. And I also like, I love the idea of like organization and that's for me, like the main reason and the time saving feature, but it's also really great. I think to, uh, like when you're collaborating with teams, and if you have other designers that are also working on the same file and you just want to stay in unison and be able to create screens that match, right? Like you don't want to be using, 
uh, different buttons, different icons. And it's also just like, like why recreate a button if there's already a button in your system? So that's also yeah. something if you, you know, when you're working with teams, um, I really think that there's no other way you should be designing if you don't have some sort of um, asset library. But now we have these ideas of design systems, which are even better. Um, and Adobe XD has a, does a great job at giving you the ability to link libraries and all that good stuff. So um, I, I think it's beautiful too. It also just looks great as a portfolio piece <laughs> to add yes. to your, to add yeah, to no, your uh, <laughs> right? Actually, actually, when you, uh, you re like after all, you realize that it's already uh, kind of like half done your, your, your portfolio mm -hmm. presentation for the project because yeah. you already have to organize your, all your elements and that's something important that you can show and right. it looks good. Right. And those portfolios, if, if you're a designer out there watching this stream, uh, you know how those can be tricky. So <laughs> always good to have the assets done up front. So yeah, let's take a look at what we did yesterday or what you did. I didn't do anything. I just, <laughs> I just hung out with you. Uh, so yeah, let's take, to walk us through what you did yesterday. All right. Um, we started here, which is our, our home. Um, this is basically where you see all the, the people that you're following and also your, your, the, the designs that you create, like kind of like posted. And um, here you can see like each individual uh, screen, like, like per post. Um, something that we mentioned yesterday uh, was that I really like to use the, the, the guides right, and define what's going to be my, my grid. And so I can keep it consistent through all my, my design. Yes. Um, we started to create this, um, these screens. That's actually like the, the create uh, feature. Mm -hmm. And we have here our uh, draw images, fonts, motions, layers. Right. So, so for so for thinking of like a create like a story on like an Instagram, right? You have those those options uh, of, of of different things that you can put like use to put objects in your workspace, right? Yes, cool. exactly. So um, I was trying to uh, make it uh, simple as I can, so each one can use it. Not, you don't need to be a, a creative. Uh, actually uh, or a designer to use it uh, anyone can have fun with it but even though if you have your own illustrations i put here the option that you can import your illustrations maybe png or svg mm -hmm. so you can also play with them here and uh, the animation part kind of like uh, is uh, the, the fun part right just because right. I, I really like animation, but <laughs> I, I, I think it's um, really cool to create um, motion in your in your in your projects. Um, people really liked it, and and each time you can see that more people is actually implemented on different uh, using different platforms. But maybe uh, this can be a, a simple and an easy way to do it. Yeah, and I totally agree, and that's. Um micro animations and any sort of movement on the screen like we don't know like how pleasing it is it, it's kind of just was one of those things that we experience and we are more engaged with these uh, products that have good micro inter interactions and they do so much for the experience so it's it's really uh it's really a great ability to be able to do that in your projects and i uh, just want to take a second to say hi to the chat julia uh, is joining us from germany uh, if you are in the chat and and i'd love to know where you're coming from Again, I'm in San Francisco, Andrea's in Miami. Uh, so we're, we're totally bi-coastal at the moment. We'd love to know where everyone else is calling in from. We got Nitin in here. We'd love to know where you're from. Uh, give us, give us a, a little message on the chat. Um, so continue on. Okay. Um, let's see. Before we jump into the um, animation part, I wanted to show you, you asked me uh, yesterday, like how this idea came to life and what is important to do sketches for you go into your design. So let's see. 
Let me know if you can see a little bit there. Okay. So I started like creating the like the main screen, like how the illustrations were going to look. So you have just a couple ideas. And then uh, here. Um, see. Yeah, so, so sketching out all your ideas, like how many times do would you normally like do sketches? Or is it kind of just like just modifying them? Mm. I kind of like uh, try one and then I, I, I do another round because I, I start like evaluating the, the first round mm -hmm. um, and, and check for my, my edits. And if you see here, the, um, the illustrations and the, and the, the, the fonts and the um, animation part, it wasn't, it, it wasn't like, like how it is right now. I started right. to, to find a lot of errors when I was just doing this um, sketches and in my menu at first uh, I was including color, mm -hmm. but it was kind of like uh, you start to, to, to test. If you put color there, it will be like confusing because you're right. putting the, 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 the elements and then you need to choose the color and then like select the, it was mm -hmm. kind of like messy. So you can like see, you can see a uh, different um, kind of like evaluate the problem before it like even right. started. Yeah, and I, I, we talked about this yesterday and I also just want to bring it up again because it's such an important like topic is when you're about to create screens, like sometimes like the instinct is just jump into the tool, like just jump into Adobe and uh, NXD and just like start designing. But sometimes it's good to take a step back and draw out your ideas and you know, the phases of your screens and all your notes, because that's the first step. And then when you get to the screen, you're going to be a lot better off and everything's going to be more organized. For me, I think of it like uh, uh, the metaphor of like when you're cooking and it's like, w if you have a, a recipe, like, do you get all of your items out and put them on the, the counter before you start? Or do you just kind of start cooking and like all your stuff is kind of like digging around while you're going, you're going to, you're going to, make a meal at the end of the day but like how messy will you be during that meal making and how how well will you follow the recipe if you don't have everything set in its place so it's kind of like the same idea with wireframes like sketching them is just going to help you in the long run and actually save you time it might seem like it's time and too and it's too too much time but i think it's not the the, the it's, it's going to actually help you in the long run would you agree yeah. with that yeah, I used to I used to think like that. I was like, I don't have time to do sketches, yeah. and 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 actually the time um, showed me that that I was wrong, <laughs> that that I was spending more time on the computer, just like, right. making changes and like <laughs> see like seeing things that, that that I could catch before. So right, it's all trial and error. Yeah, that's and I totally agree. So we have a uh, Jennifer from Maryland. Uh, we have Vikas from India. Rachel from Iowa City. Uh, so definitely by coastal global, we're going everywhere. Uh, we have a question from Jennifer is um, how do you export your files uh, for web designer to keep all the animations you create? So like, so how, how when we, and we can get into this later, maybe, but uh, maybe as a, as a kind of answering this question that's here now, um, like, so when you have animations, like, how do you export them? What's your process for that? Um, actually, I uh, I just I've, with XD and the animations part I I just do uh, the recording. Recording like, is is really cool that you can record your interaction and then save it as a MP4. Yeah. And uh, um, also on the phone with if you have the, the app you can record your screen and it's, it looks even better because it's taking the, the actual size of the. Of of the phone and yeah. you don't have like the the cursor that you, right. you get on the on the computer right um but i never i actually never exported these illustrations into code like for code the coding part right right because that sometimes is done uh, uh in different ways depending on the budget of the design team and the development team right you can use gifts you can use like actual uh, Lottie files, you can you can do it like animations. I feel like is a big conversation of how you implement that yeah. into a real design, right? So um, there's many ways, um, but for I think 
uh, using the, the, the presenter tool in XD allows you to screen record. Do you mind showing really quickly for, for the person you ask like where that presenter, uh, that play button um, and, yes. how, and how that works? see here and we will andrea will show like more of this later but we'll just give you a, a preview of like um like yeah so the record button is on the top right and it's just play button and then you have your uh window here and yeah. you can record that's it and then once you're done it allows you to save it and then you save it as a uh, a png or sorry as a uh, mp4 right an mm -hmm. mp4 file and what's great about the mp4 files is that you can then uh, upload those into Behance and you can show those off. Um, so it's, it's a really good way to, to, to practice, uh, you know, sharing your videos. And so we have, uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil the, uh, the demo for <laughs> when we get to the prototyping because this is going to be really cool. Um, so that's, that's a great question. Um, it's a really great feature of XD that it offers that. So we have uh, Stone is joining us from, uh, he's in Iowa. Uh, transplanted from Jersey. Uh, nothing wrong with Jersey. Love it. I've, I've actually, uh, I've been there once, so it was really great. Um, and then we have uh, Nitin coming from India. And yeah, we have all kinds of, all kinds of people hopping in the stream. So uh, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, more of this uh, advanced prototyping stuff. So if you're just joining us, um, join here with Andrea Marquez. Uh, she is a art director, UX and UI designer at Zag Creative. And did I get that? Zach Creative, Jack Creative, right? Yes. Okay, Zach Creative in Miami, and we're we're on day two doing this uh, uh this this demo of uh, advanced prototyping. So uh, we're on now, kind of like wiring things up. Is 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 that going to be the the next step? Uh, are we going to uh, get? No. Uh, yeah, we're okay. going to no. We're going to start with the animation part. Ah, nice. Because I I'm really excited about this one. Nice. So let's make a little room here and let's bring this and here. So, and Nitin says that Andre is famous globally. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hi, Nitin. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's so fun. How do you organize your, your screens to your prototype? I, I like how like doing it like this way. So I like I know that horizontally I'm I'm keeping the flow, but like vertical I can see like how each screen like like move around. Right. But I but I know that everyone like does it differently. How do you do it? I I do I do more of the flow horizontally in terms of like the screen that I'm in. Uh, or the, the actual, the flow of the design goes horizontally and then interactions, I go down. And I, okay. and it's up so to every, everyone has their own way, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's practically the same, but uh, reverse, like the reverse. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's start with this one. Um, first, we're going to just, uh, we're going to create just one is to start uh, with some elements. Uh, usually, I, I don't use more than five screens, like okay. artworks, but you, you can use as many as you want. And like once you start adding, it gives you the, the possibility to, to, to have more movement or, or interactions, or maybe you have um, and some artwork, uh, something that you can click a button and it will take you to another experience. So it's really cool to, to experiment with this uh, tool. And let's begin with, let's make the eye close a little bit. Right, so what Andrea is doing is basically duplicating that first artboard, right? Yes. Duplicating the artboard. To, the first one, I'm going to uh, leave it exactly as we yeah. have our illustration, and I'm going to start um, making some uh, interactions or um, modifications on the second one. And we'll do uh, different ones on the third one, and we'll see how it goes. Right. And while, and while you're doing that, I'll just kind of give some like tips on 
prototyping with um, auto animate. I'm sure people have used it because it's an amazing feature. Uh, but one of the, 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 the tricks of auto animate is you, you duplicate the artboard. So that way all the layers stay the same, right? You don't want to change layer names. You don't want to create new layers because once you do that, um, the, the auto animate feature starts to kind of break down a little. Uh, and so you don't get that that quality of, uh, of animation and the tweening, that, that kind of stuff doesn't work. Uh, so just a, just a tip, and uh, I, I know a lot of you already kind of know that, but if you didn't uh, and you can't figure out why your auto animate isn't working, that's usually why, because um, either you change the name of a layer, you added a new element, um, those are things that will impact the way uh, auto animate works. Yeah, it's actually really important that you um, don't change anything. Yeah. Especially because what auto animates uh, does is that it reads it is the same file, but you like since we're working with vector files, uh, a, a, any transformation that you do, uh, he's going to interpret interpret that the same object is going to be uh, a little bit like smaller or bigger. So um, yeah. that's that's kind of like the the only thing like more or less that you need to control that you, if you start like adding elements or just changing the, the elements into each right. artwork is not going to work or perform or perform the, the way you want it to. Yeah, exactly. And that, it, it, it makes sense if you think about it, like if you're just doing another, like a, a given an animation on paper, uh, if you throw in some random object that wasn't there before, it's not going to look the same. So definitely keeping in mind that you can still change the shape of the vector, but you just can't rename it. Yes. Um, OK, so I, I did for the second uh, stage. Um, I close a little bit the eye. And um, what I like to do to start my animation is define what's going to be uh, kind of like my first movement. So I, I, I can start like, um, creating or duplicating these artworks because I know that it's going to be consistent and then adding more uh, movement within the animation. You'll right. see it in a little bit. Nice. So let's see, let's have this four right now. We have, um, so if the eye is open, then we, if it goes um, close, open again and it's close again. And the, um, I did this because if we start prototyping just one, just with this movement, let's connect this one and tap auto animate. I'm going to use easy out because I want like the, like the smooth part like to be at the end. Mm -hmm. And then this is kind of like where the magic happens. Yeah. Because, um, no, my bad. It's not time. It's not time. It's time. Sorry. So time. Uh, the delay, we, we keep it on zero. Auto anime. And easy out. And then here. So basically, we're telling the program that within uh, the first artwork and the second one, you're going to have like x um, amount of time to give the vector that movement like to to move it uh to, to make the animation and you can like make it faster or 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 slower i like to use 0 0.8 seconds and then i grab this one and i use the same um configuration that i have for first and the cool part is it, it, it copies over that first, yes, that, that that's previous. Perfect. Yeah. You like don't need to, to re, like reprogram it. it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's yeah. a, that's just like a, a like a, a really great, like this, like designing for designers kind of trick. Uh, Cause why would you have to repeat that? All right. so and, and also the timing is really important when you're, when you're, yeah, like you said, it, this is where the magic does really carry the animation. Uh, Cause it, but this is also where, Sometimes people can make mistakes with animation and make it too long. Uh, a lot of times that's usually the case is sometimes the animation is like too long and it draws out that animation too long. Yes, and, and that's something um, that I guess, uh, I, I, I kind of like 
to do the animations and then save it and see it on my phone just to evaluate because uh, like we we do this all the time we go to social media posts or, or any uh, website most of the time we're using our phone and we realize that um, it's too slow or, or it's too fast so I, I guess like to put it on, 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 on my phone I can see how yeah. it will perform and, and, and just evaluate like just take a step back and, and see if, how it's going to be like if it's going to like if I'm if I'm adding too much time maybe uh, the, the the people that is like seeing the the actual post is not going to spend two seconds just yeah. in in one movement so I yeah. try to to play and evaluate that a little bit. That's really you have to do that right, and I think that's smart to to like tell people that like this is an important piece of animations and. As we know, when people have mobile phones in their hands and they're scrolling through a feed, like the attention is is, is sometimes hard to grasp, like on yes. one object, right? Like we kind of just keep scrolling. So being like these these designs are eye catching, so you'd want to kind of watch them, but you don't want to take too long. So it's a really exactly. good tip. Okay. So before to do the um, to connect it, uh, the, the last one. Let me. Um, go over a little bit uh, so i connect this one with time zero delay auto animate easy out and 0 0.8 seconds i use the same one to connect this one and the same one here and i'm going to use the last one to connect it to the first one so that creates the uh, the loop that we want to because actually you are not like uh, at first I was using tab, but if you're going to use it, use tab, you'll use it here, right? So you click and actually uh, goes into the, into the post. And since it's connected through time, you don't need to make an interaction. So the animation happens yeah. when you're inside the post. And if we test this, you'll see that we have our eye. <laughs> Instant gratification, and, I, I, yes. that looks so cool. <laughs> so um, I did this, so why, why I did just one um, in motion kind of, uh, instead of like start playing with the other ones, right. is because I, I kind of love to do this. So I will leave this uh, window open here and I'll start messing with this. So let's go to design mode. And let's see, I want to create a circle in here. Let's the we're, we're, all, we're all so captivated. I'm just like watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. And let's put this circle over here. Natine says, Natine says he's a big fan of your loops. Thank you, Natine. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to copy this circle, but we don't we don't see it here. I'm going to paste it on the oops. Here, copy. Jaren and Jaren. Jaren says it's 1 a.m. Where, where is it 1 a.m.? Where are you uh, joining us from? I'd love to know that. And I know in, uh, Nitin said it's, uh, it's, it's midnight in uh, India. It's uh, currently obviously in San Francisco. It's, uh, it's 12.30, yes. And then in Miami, it's 3.30. So we'd love to know what time it is where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> we're all- It's global. Uh, we're remotely yes. global. We're, we're, all, we're all connected by the web and by a prototype. Okay, so I, 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 I put a circle here. You can see it on the on the first screen. And on the second one, I'm going to put it over here to create kind of like the- Crescent? Like a, like a moon, you see? Yeah. So it's showing me here that at first, the, the two um, artwork is really neat. Uh, like you have something and then it moves, but on the third and the fourth one, it disappears. So you have like that, like fade um, effect there. So let me copy the first one to the 
four. I'll leave it on the same uh, position as the first one. And then the second one, I'm going to paste it. This one, the five, it's actually the four, okay. So now we have... Look at that, that's so cool. I, I've, you know, I've never thought to, to do that, to like leave the, the, the preview screen and see the animation unfold. That's, that's a really smart idea. So if you're watching, uh, take notes, because this is a, a good way for yourself to just like see what you're doing in real time. Yeah, it's um, actually for me, it was kind of like a, like an error that I, that, that I discovered that. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's a, and, and that's amazing because I was just trying to edit right. and I, I didn't close the, the window and I tried to edit um, the artwork and I, and I saw that it was moving and it was changing with, yeah. with my, my interaction. So I was like, this is awesome. That's, that's I right. can kind, kind of like preview and if I don't like it, I, I don't have to like go back and play it. I can just keep working here. Yeah, it's a, a happy accident, as Bob Ross would call it. I, I think that's amazing. Like, like some of the best discoveries like are just by playing around with things, and sometimes it happened by accident. So <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal this idea because I think it's really cool to see. <laughs> like I was like when I saw you, I was like, hmm, what's she gonna do? And I was like, oh, that makes total sense. That's really cool. And then like you could even you could even like do things like. If you wanted to get, go crazy, you can make like those leaves move, right? You can make exactly. The, you can now, make, like now you you have like so you, you define the first one. That's why I kind of like to to make just one to yeah. see how it's going to uh, perform while I'm I'm moving the other elements. Yeah. And and you can uh, just play around with so this one we have uh, the rotation is in, in zero. Oh, you're gonna, I had a feeling you were going to rotate the sun. This is yes. <laughs> cool. So let's put um, 180 here. And now uh, you can see it there, but then it stops. Right. But what about if we put this one in 360? The last one, since is zero, because we haven't uh, edited, it starts like fast and then go faster and then like it, right. it goes back. So you, you can play within, that's, that's the magic here. Like you can start playing with numbers and, and right. random movements and everything is kind of like a, like an experiment. You will have, again, your, you, like a, you, every time you can, you can have like a different result. All right. Just so, just like me, there are people in the chat who are surprised that, that you could do this. So, uh, Nikhil says, uh, "Never need that you could do that. It's awesome." So, I I, I agree. Um, what like those little discoveries are awesome. <laughs> it's really cool. Yes. So uh, let's see. Let's move this a little bit on the third one. Just one up. How it looks. Andreas, hi uh, from Chile. So we got more more global action coming in. <laughs> Hi, Andres. I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So I, if you want, like, just make a, a, a subtle uh, movement uh, on the third artwork. I just move a little bit the the, the grid that I have over here. So mm. it's just like like a detail there. And let's see what we do with the lift. Kind of like want to make it maybe go down. Oops. One, two. Hamza, yeah. how's it going? Benjamin uh, has a question from you, uh, for you. Uh, says, hi, Andrea. Uh, what do you think about using a pen or tablet for UI UX design, uh, like like a Wacom tablet? I never use a. a a tablet to to do UX UI design, but I guess I guess depend what you what you're trying to do. Because yeah. if you want to to do illustrations and you have a you have you have good uh, good skills using the, the the tablet, you can create it there. And right. even and even here, you can you can illustrate on on Adobe XD. Right. Um, but basically, right. I I kind of like to use more like the precision of the mouse because mm -hmm. you are you're 
working with grids and, and the position of the elements so it might be um, you can do it with a, with a tablet but maybe um, it's not as precise right yeah and 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 that's that's like a great advice but like I have a question is uh, just how you design do you prefer using a mouse or the trackpad mouse mouse right yeah I'm the same and do you do you have like a specific mouse you have to use Apple <laughs> <All right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah I have I have the same and that's for me like like when I don't have my mouse and I like accidentally like forget it and I have to use a trackpad I'm like my brain sometimes just like is fighting with my <laughs> with my design ability I'm just I, like I, I'm, I know and and some people love it and so people hate it my husband yeah. uh cannot use this mouse he feels like it's weird it's not friendly and I was like are you kidding me? It's perfect. Like you can right. scroll to like with it, like it has too many interactions and it doesn't have a, a, a button kind of like, it's just, right. it's uh, for me, it's just like my, it's perfect. I use the, the trackpad, um, especially on my laptop, Right. but for different stuff, I don't use it like for design. I kind of like move things around and I can, I can do it there. But if I have to design, I need, I need the mouse. If you could use XD on an iPad, would you? Yes. Right? For I'm sure. the same. So Adobe, get on. Uh, I think they are working on something, but yes. a, an iPad app that's not just a prototype uh, display, like a preview display, but like an actual XD app that you can use, like Illustrator, right? Illustrator now has. Uh, a tablet it's pretty uh, cool. version yeah and it's like being able to create vectors on a tablet is amazing and it's i think amazing. i think that's like the future of like because it's more intuitive right like being able to use your your hand to draw instead of like using a mouse yeah i don't know i don't know how it is because no tools um, are like that yet right yeah but it, it will be really interesting uh to to test actually like how do you position all the elements into your it might be uh easier also with that with an iPhone. So it would be like super fun to, to test. Yeah. Benjamin agrees uh, in the chat that XD on the iPad would be awesome. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Like we gotta get Howard Pinsky on the line. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so we oh let's let's make a little animation to this one. And see like the way that that, that Andrea is doing this, it, it looks easy. And that's because all the work that she has done beforehand of, of making sure all the, the, the layers are the same um, and, and just doing these shapes out of like simple, uh, simple shapes to make these abstract uh, designs. It, it actually is easy once you kind of just learn these like little tricks of timing and uh, in the type of interaction like time based, like because the time based interaction is really what's driving a lot of these, uh, these, this motion. Yeah. And, and, and I use, and the only the other thing is that I only use one type of uh, input here for the for the animation. Right. It's the same through all the, the screens. Right. So I, I basically like set up uh, my time, and then I start playing with with my elements. So yeah, that's the awesome. It's just really really fun. And this is this is um, basic uh, shapes and 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 basic movement. But you can go crazy. Like if you have um, drawing skills, you you can um, do a story on your <laughs> with with the with your screens with auto animate. Like just creating like little um, little inter um, elements through through all the screens, it will perform. So I there is no no limit, kind. Of. Right. That's awesome, and. Uh... It's 45 minutes until the, uh, the, the design feedback countdown. Uh, so if you are just joining us, uh, we are here with Andrea Marquez. She is a, a UI UX designer uh, at Zag Creative uh, and joining us from Miami. I'm in San Francisco uh, remotely uh, chatting and going through this amazing app that we're animating at the moment. Uh, so if you have any questions for Andrea, please ask. Uh, we would love to dive into whatever it is you wanna learn about um, prototyping or or whatever, whatever it is that you want to learn, uh, just just shoot some questions. Love to hear from you. So if you are in the chat, uh, keep keep the questions coming. We we love to answer them. Okay, let's jump to the next one. 
Let's just see. How are we going to play with this? So for this one, I'm going to start with the text. I kind of want to make it slow at the beginning. So I'm going to leave like the same, um, the same way it is on the first screen. Mm -hmm. And for this one, let's add Two hundred and forty of uh, layer spacing, and for the last one, I'm gonna keep it the same way it was at the beginning. Try to type. This one I wanted a little bit faster since I'm putting like I'm I'm leaving this to in the same uh, position or state. I want the the screens between each other go a little bit faster. So it's yeah. 0 0.6. Right. Let's do this. And so the, there's a, a question that I think this is a, one of the questions that get asked a lot is um, when you're designing these animations, like how do you hand it to developers? So uh, this, this is a good question and uh, we're not we're, like we don't want to avoid the question but um for it the answer is it depends right it depends. <laughs> like because because a lot of times like what andrea is doing is like right now creating a gif um and so if you export this it's a video and it's going to be an mp4 uh which can be uh you know actually input into your uh right into your 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 design even if it's a coded design you can have an mp4 as like a, a loaded gif in your uh display um so it doesn't that doesn't really like answer the question because uh, you could use uh like final cut you can use other other types of uh, of, of modes of creating animations that export um, but sometimes those are live coded um uh, like javascript and that's a whole nother ball game right like thinking about like how our animations don't translate to JavaScript from the design tool. So um, like I said, it depends. So it's a tricky conversation about how exporting these go into uh, a Any of you, any of you have the, the team that is actually able to develop this type of animations like through code, uh, this, this could be just a, like a reference and you can like uh, exactly. give them the, the the, the the time the specific time the rotation how do you if you move it uh 30 points up or 30 points down like it can it can be kind of like um like a mock-up like a reference for mm -hmm. for people that can actually uh do this type of uh, animations on code yep yeah and that's this it's a great question i think that's a really great uh comment too is uh these are a lot of times references like when we create these designs in these workspaces, uh, because what like when we when we create these elements, like there there's a difference between a picture and what's coded. Like the code is is something a, a completely different thing, and so a lot of times a developer will just translate what you've made into something that's codable. So that that's kind of like the 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 benefit of of like a designer. We don't have to code, and I, I want to yes. I'm I want to keep it that way. Uh, there's some people that that do both and that's cool uh that's but i'm cool. That's like a superpower <laughs> it's a superpower I, I, it is it is because yeah. I, I start seeing all the all the text and uh, my eyes can 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 take it <laughs> too long and, and and then you start moving around and everything goes into a mess and you're like just i, I can do this i i keep designing and and in a few times i try to do it because for me, it's really important and it's something that um, that happens a lot. It's like you design this uh, grid, this um, alignment, the, the spacing, the, the sizing, and then uh, sometimes the uh, developers don't respect that. Right. And uh, there, there's a question that like that I want to answer because I think this is something I'm I'm really interested in. Uh, so Raul asked the question: Is uh, can you share your favorite tools? to make sure you pass accessibility guidelines. So um, if you wouldn't mind hopping over to my screen, uh, I can show you um, that I have, uh, and if you if you log into my Behance, um, 
I have a, a resource uh, that folks can use. Um, hopefully it helps. So uh, I, have, I have made this a, a few weeks back, a few months back. Um, so it's a designing uh, uh, guidelines and accessibility best practices. Um, so there are some, some best practices that I laid out about um, some, some different things like with contrast, color blindness, and recommendations for simulators, um, things of that nature. Uh, how to keep your content right with hierarchy, semantic, all kinds of cool stuff for you. And there's, there's some resources and references from uh, WCAG for the 2.0, WebAIM uh, accessibility principles. Um, so test, testing your, your accessibility is really important um, and giving you some guidelines is something that um, I, I think is important. So um, you can use, uh, you can, and we can hop back over to your screen so that we can you know, continue. Uh, I just wanted to share that real quick. Um, yeah, that's really, really important. Using uh, using plugins like Stark uh, is is also a, a cool trick that you can you know at least use color and um, you can you can test your color, you can test your contrast uh, because those are going to be the key things. Uh, making sure your your uh, your 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 screens are zoomable um, are also really important. Uh, so those are those are kind of my tips of interests that you might want to look into. So. So let's keep on with this one. We have the uh, text part. So even though that I that I that I give a little bit uh, like less time within each screen, since I just have the movement on the third artboard, it goes like if you you see that the goes like uh, faster within the, the 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 normal state kind of, mm -hmm. and then the other one just go up and like close same time so it's like um like a smooth movement kind of yeah that's awesome and let's see um let's move this little one smaller All right now one of the, this one um i kind of like have to figure it out because let me let me show you what happens if you start moving this. So let me uh, unlink my component to show you what happens if I do it this way. But let's rotate the. Oh. Is, is working. So what happened, and sometimes um, when you're moving shapes, the, um, it kind of like, since it's auto animate and he's trying to um, move those vectors, you, right. you you might have like different elements, like moving a little bit, like down or, or to yeah. the side. So it doesn't match with the actual um, like shape. Right. And, and it, it looks weird. So what I did, um, was make it into a component because it's kind of like um, you're telling the program that it needs to, to be exactly how it is and, and it can be move around. Right. But actually, I guess since I have it as components on the other one, it's working. So if you, you have this problem at some point, just make sure to make it a component and you'll have the problem solved. Nice. That's a good trick because I think that can catch people up a little bit. Yes. So let's see. I just rotate the head and the hair and I put the eyes a little bit. Mm. <laughs> Cody Bear said, coding is too much for my brain. I, I, <laughs> and and I, you, Andrea, so background on Andrea is like one of your initial uh, gateways into the business of, of, you know, being a creative was, was coding, right? Like that yes. was, you, you, you gave that a try. Did you do HTML and CSS and JavaScript? No, I, 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 I didn't make it so far. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed on to, on to HTML. HTML, right? Right. Yes. No, I'm the same. Like I, I tried, I, good Lord. I, I, I try, I bought the books. I did uh, the, like some, you I know, have books, um, free, free boot camps. I, I started to like. I, I think each six or eight months, I 
try it again. It's like I I, I wanted to, I to try if my brain now is able to to digest that content. Yeah. But right. It's not right. happening. It's like, not. We can keep so, we can keep trying. We'll keep trying though. Yes. Maybe someday. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Uh, and so does XD support third party plugins? Um, yeah, third party plugins are is the plugin the plugin store. Um, those are all companies that create plugins for XD. There, there's actually a whole community that, that is that is driven around creating plugins. And it's, uh, it's something that if you wanted to create a plugin, you can like there's there's framework for you. Uh, that's actually how I met Adobe was I created uh, a, a concept for a plugin that was um, accessibility driven. And um, so it's it's available to to go in there and, and, and learn how to make a plugin to, to, to that would work with XD. So yes, there is third party plugins and I highly recommend get, getting into those because there's, there's some really good ones there. Okay. Stones, Stones says, Python is easy to use. So maybe that's what we need to try. Okay. I'll give it a try to right. see how. I've there done. you go. <laughs> there, we'll there are a lot back. of, uh, right now there are a lot of possibilities. Like each time that I that I try yeah. to, to learn how to code, there is a new one. And, and it's like, okay. Right. okay, let's see how, but I guess it's the same with uh, the design part is each, um, month or three months we you have like a new um way to do things that you you do like a year ago like yep. it's different or or you you actually uh were taking more time so yeah everything like evolves so fast that it's, it's uh, to it be. is and there's a lot of tools now that like l allow you create to create and go straight to code so you know adobe xd has they do have the developer, uh, you know, portion of, of like sharing your projects and sharing them with developers. So there is that whole aspect of it too. Uh, we, we're not going to get into that on this show probably. Um, but I would urge you to explore the share function on Adobe's, uh, on XD's platform. And there is like sharing CSS snippets. So there's, there's ways to do it. Okay. So let me show you here. You, you can see that we have, the the face just moving and i yeah, i had really this cute. the the hair it was here right so the i bun. just yep, yes. I'm just moving like a little here and i love how how the program knows that it's not just like it's here and then you're putting it here it, it actually like make this uh transition for the shape so that's how um you can start playing with your that's awesome elements now let's see yeah we have the turner okay and if you see here when it's like the eyes are like passing the, the middle kind of like get lost a little bit with the hair so mm. we can maybe move it a little bit up the hair or you can move the eyes down, right? Yes, that too. Let's go with the eyes down. It's, there. it's there so cool, just like being able to like explore these, like using XD in a different way almost, like like for these these gifts. It's like it's taking the animation tool to that to that level of like uh you know creating gifts for it like people don't think you can use a xd for gifts but you could totally do that it's, and it's not hard yes and 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 uh i i i kind of like started to do this because i wanted to do um an animation um it was actually kind of um it, it wasn't for for uh ux ui or an app or a website it was a social media post and but it was kind of like a chat like the bubbles uh just coming and respond like like a messaging uh platform mm -hmm. but it, but it was a post so i um i had this this idea maybe that, that using auto animate i was like i started to try uh, by that time the 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 option 
and I have this idea that maybe within the artworks I, I can make it like easier and then faster like actually doing it on 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 Adobe After Effects since I was yeah. like doing the, the elements because it was a, like a messaging uh, platform animation I was working on XD so maybe I can animate it here and that's how I started I started like trying and then okay let's, let's add a little bit of movement to this one so the bubble like comes up and, mm -hmm. and from smaller to, to bigger so that's how I, I started to try this yeah and, that's a cool way now to I'm obsessed <laughs> yeah right it's like you don't need to use after effects for exactly. these exactly and still and it, people people do and that's okay right it's you no, know it's just you a little have, easier you have, you, after effects is, is an amazing tool and you have mm. um other possibilities there like it's right. just depend what you need to do but if you are doing um kind of like a uh, something simple that you can control the, the right. assets and, and not that many screens you you can do it here yeah and that's that's where i feel like is is you know that tool uh, after effects it has so much to, that you can do and sometimes there's like the tool is too powerful for the job and you know if you're just doing like little micro animations like you don't need to use a tool like that you could do all those here also your computer that's the cool part will, tenfold, will be tenfold that's true too a little bit more performance See, that's that's a really great point that you bring up like thinking about accessibility is you know access xd is like a lot like it's free um whereas so is so the uh, you know thinking about that but also like the resources that your computer needs to run uh final cut is uh or is it no not final cut um what were we saying uh premiere pre not premiere pre yeah all these advanced tools like after effects it, it's going to take more computer power. So if you don't have like a, you know, the, uh, you have like a smaller, older computer, sometimes it, it will have a hard time rendering. That's something to keep in mind too. But yeah, you can you can use uh, MP4s, right? You can export MP4s. So uh, people are asking like, is there a plugin to export GIFs? I think that would be an amazing idea um, to to like kind of package things up as a shortcut to export GIFs to Auto Loop. Um, but you know, if you export as an MP4 and then you use YouTube or somewhere to, to host it, you can just loop it through there. So, you know, it's it's really splitting hairs on like how you actually deliver and, and export things. Okay, so I, I keep adding like um, different uh, movement. I change the color over here. The first, uh, the the middle. Uh, well, you have it like with a different color and then I move it for the last one. So you have like kind of like it starts and go uh, to the next one. Mm. This is so cool. <laughs> Let's see. A little bit maybe um, 90. And zero. And then I will double it here. Maybe. And it just it just makes these like simple shapes like come even more to life, right? Like I think the colors alone like made them appealing, but now it's like the next level is like motion. So these are starting to come to life. It's really great. I I I am super curious. I am once I start uh, doing um, an illustration, I want to see how it moves, and yeah. it's moving. I want to see uh, how it looks in augmented augmented reality. So it's always well, like I need to see. <laughs> I saw um, that. So so I, I was looking at your your projects on your Instagram, and if you haven't, if anybody hasn't seen, uh, you also like to dabble in an uh, AR, right? That's another I, interest I, of yours. I really like it. It's so cool. It's so cool. Yeah, and and maybe there's like room for a, a show in another time where you can demonstrate. Uh, but maybe you can post a tutorial somewhere, you know, yes. wherever wherever it is you want to. <laughs> Because, right, we're, we're, I think everyone is kind of, uh, their interest is, is there for augmented reality. Uh, it's just, that it's, for some people, it's like kind of abstract. Like it's, we're not there yet. It's too weird. But I think doing experiments is really cool. Yes. I, I think, I, I'm not, a, I just, I, I feel like the necessity to, to try like new things, um, the world like goes, so fast that I, that I 
I'm such a, a, a designer <laughs> and I need that I'm, I'm like staying behind. So I just started like testing all these uh, kind of like new possibilities that they're, they're coming. And Adobe Aero, Aero is, is so cool. It's, it's, it's super easy to use too. And you can use like import an image and, and see how it goes from there because you can add uh, motion even yeah. on, the, on the app. So let's see, maybe we do um, yeah. another <laughs> uh, live or tutorial with, with some tips over there. Yeah, I, I, I like doing the using uh, augmented reality is was one of those like at first like really weird things, but I you know I like everything else things kind of become normal. So we'll see we'll see one day if, if AR is like a normal thing that everybody uses. Yeah. Right now it's it's kind of like you know uh, I, I like to show my daughter like how to look at a dinosaur in our living room, which is it's pretty cool to be That's able to amazing. do that. You know like. <laughs> And and uh, and I bet she loved. Yeah, no, it's it's she's like, what is going on? Like at first, you know, and then it's like, oh, it's just in the screen. It's like, yeah, let's go, it's cool. <laughs> just that playing around. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, I add different movement here, so you can keep adding to your right. You, just, you can move. Just go crazy. Yes. You can go crazy with this stuff. It's Let's awesome. See. Let's change the color. So it pops. It's more like a, like a party in here. Yeah, so being able to then change color through animation is another trick. That's cool. Like, and you can, I, like, there are a lot of possibilities since you have this vector, you can just, you don't need to make it perfect. You can just distort uh, the elements and you'll see it doesn't right. look bad. <laughs> yeah, you see, yeah. it just kind of like fix it for you. That's awesome. It's that, it's that easy, right? It is, as long as your assets are vectors and you know, like the timing is right, it's all, it's all gonna work out. It's really cool. And you can get really complex with these too, if you wanted to. Yes, exactly. You can, if you are into animation, um, you start see the, the like you you know the the basic already. So you 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 can like go crazy and, and play uh, harder with this type of movement. Yeah, Drew had a, a really great idea, and. I'm not, I have to test this and see like if you can't, um, but exporting auto animate properties like position, scale, opacity, and easing from XD to After Effects would be dope. I 100% agree if you were able to export properties, values of animations, uh, that would be amazing. Cause it's basically like CSS, right? Like if you're able to export that, cause it's all data. It's all, yes. everything's pinned underneath the, what they call this, the scene graph. So. If you could do that, like, why not? Like have just like a, a flow from here to a powerful tool like uh, After Effects. Yeah, that's that's a really great, really great idea. Okay, so we did uh, two animations. Uh, we can do a third one or we can like uh, go into how the, the app interacts. Let me show you guys. Um, what I have right now. Yeah, and uh, as a reminder, it's uh, 20 more minutes until the design feedback. Uh, we're gonna look at some projects that people have been working on in the daily creative challenge. And uh, if you are just joining us or not really sure who I am or who uh, Andrea is, um, this is Andrea Marquez, I'm Julian. And uh, Andrea is designing a creative app that allows you to share uh, uh illustrations uh in in this environment that's and, and who knows maybe behance will implement this as one of their new features so uh, <laughs> yes. that would be that would be the goal that would be um, awesome. but yeah i'm joining you from san francisco and andrea's uh in miami and we would love to know where you're where you're joining us from uh there's so many different uh, area codes that we were or uh time zones that we already explored uh so we'd love to know where you're from and where you're joining us from so and we're in the portion of now taking the the screen designs and kind of uh 
mixing the 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 elements in the screens, right? Yes. Sorry to ask you a question as you drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So we started to uh, to do this, like how it will look. Actually, uh, like to create an actual uh, design with the, with this app, and how uh, it will move, and how to do this on um, on Adobe XD. Since it's really cool that like, you can use it for any project, like how do you animate and move uh, things around and, and create your own like uh, GIF and loops. Uh, but now let's see on the actual create uh, app, like the, 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 the create part, like how the tools like are um, prototyped and how the elements like, like you can move around or just uh, click into each other and see how the the gallery like goes up and you can um, scroll mm -hmm. within yeah. your assets and same with the font part and for motion you have like your basic um, features like to scale, rotation, position, transparency. So I really like um, because kind of like the, the, the interactions that we have within within the app itself. I, I think it's really cool how uh, people can learn to to apply to the their preference like. They don't need to go and, and do something like this, but it can give you like an idea or how to how to implement it in something that is totally different. Right. You you had a lot of uh, um, like different interactions in in this in the screen that you just showed, uh, and so like those are those are all those are all like functions that you can you can do with the the the, the locking your uh your scrolling positions and things like that those are all in that um in that right panel so um, definitely a really great use of all those tools yes did you and did you incorporate sorry go ahead no no yeah go ahead no. did you incorporate any like uh, slider uh functions uh, in this in this uh, prototype mm, like no. dra dragging the dragging uh, uh oh yes yes direction yes. let me see so we have it um, on the the dragging, and and this is the if you're if you're doing the creative challenge, uh, Andrea is basically contributing to the creative challenge uh, <laughs> with with the, with this demo because it's the dr being able to use a slider is uh, is a really cool trick because like you can actually. Uh, a, like drag things and animate things as like this. You can change the color um, with using a slider and it looks real, right? Like this is something that like, it, it seems like, wow, oh, this isn't a prototype that can do this, but yeah, this is an XD prototype. <laughs> and it yes, can. and, and you, you can go ahead and like um, make it as detailed as you want, or you can, or even if like, uh, like right now, I just have, uh, configure it like you can see here. I have like the green, uh, red, uh, gray, and white. But you yeah, can yeah. like go ahead and, and like go like each, um, right? Each, each color. color, yes. You can get as detailed as you want. And and you showed yesterday how, um, the way that you were able to achieve that that uh, that color that isn't going to overwhelm the screen by using the blur background. So, um, if you if you haven't, if you didn't see that. Uh, I would I would watch yesterday's show because we got a lot to still get into today. Um, but if you wanted to, it's up to you if you wanted to show that. But it's it's a really cool trick, and it's something that like I didn't even didn't even realize I could do either. Yeah, I, I it's actually um, I think it's a, an awesome uh, tool, especially if you if you have um, if your prototype like has like different uh, colors or or, or, is, or something is changing. Uh, with with the glass effect, you can the the background blur. You can like play with your 
with your um um I forgot the, <laughs> the word with like, like kind of like yeah when you're with your configurations kind of like the to give like exactly the look that, that you want and and you will save um the icons kind of like if like if you have like light icons and you go for a light background yeah they and you're talking like about it. like the contrast right you the won't contrast, lose yes. you won't lose that contrast value that which is which is important right yes. um and so that's that's a really cool trick thanks for thanks for showing that again uh people are loving your stuff uh natalie says this is so good fire uh fire 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 emojis uh, <laughs> Hi, uh jose po Jose wants to know where you can get your files. <laughs> uh, so maybe the, maybe there's UI, UI kits in your future. I'm sure you've already thought about making some UI kits. Uh, but if you if you uh, are considering it, I'm sure there's an audience for them. Uh, and there's also a question of uh, uh, from Nitin is, do you make your uh, elements pixel perfect in XD? I try to. I love uh, the <laughs> pixel perfect, but I'm not going to say that everything's pixel perfect because I right. probably right. will be lying. Because and even sometimes, um, especially with icons, when you have like icons from different um, libraries, but look uh, similar, you need to play around with the sizes and and the proportions. So for the eye. Um, is, it looks like it's the same size, but if you actually uh, measure it, it's not. Right. So it's, it's kind of like playing around, but I really like the, the it's perfect. That, and that's, I think like when, depends on the project is my answer, right? Like if it's something that's just for myself, um, that's just for fun or just some, like some side project, I won't really like make them too pixel perfect, uh, yes. but like, you know, if it's, if it's something for work and something that like needs to be delivered, like, my my uh, my my team would probably want me to make them pixel perfect because then it would save everybody the drama later on. So yeah. I think it's case to case mm -hmm. for me, right? Uh, and Alexis is joining the chat. Uh, my uh, my uh, my confidant. Uh, thanks for thanks for being here. This is a wild prototype. I agree. This is there's a lot going on in this prototype, and I think most people might not realize <laughs> how many different how many different features within a feature you're actually using uh, and that's and that's a testament to like your experience of like like what you want to translate on the screen is uh you know you're 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 taking you you're making use of all the different ways that the, the prototype tool works and i think that's awesome thank you um well i'm gonna uh now i'm going i want to show you kind of like the the this movement let's see I have the windows like just pop and and how you can like scroll through it because um, XD has this like you can create this as like a like an individual artwork and then put it as uh, overlay I think is the option right. the overlay but, mm -hmm. but um, it gets uh, tricky when you want to do the the scrolling part on that overlay and I had I, I started doing it like that and I had like a couple issues um, for that, for what I was trying to do like you you can use it you can you can use it if it works for you mm -hmm. but what I did in this one was kind of like let me rip this in here like since uh, we create the the grid we repeat mm -hmm. it and then replace the elements. Uh, we created uh, kind of like um, one that is uh, hide. And this um, option, this tool, is the, the vertical scroll, it, I think is awesome. Like yeah. since you since XD applied, uh, I'm using it all the time. So what I did was just let me. Uh, Activated. I have I select all my all uh, all the all the grid all the elements, mm -hmm. and then I click it here, or you can do it or horizontal if horizontal. you want. Horizontal, yeah. And this is a newer feature, right? Yes, and it, it makes kind of like a mask, I mm -hmm. think, 
like you can uh, decide where it's going to be hided, like the, the elements, like up to what part you want it like to be seen. And yeah. then here too. Yeah, so and so if, we, if, if you're after like realism, like with the way that your prototype functions, like this is such a cool new feature to be able to create like this auto mask that you can use to scroll up and down within your design. So cool. Okay, so this was uh, kind of um, also a challenge because if I don't have the um, my navigation behind this, because if I have it, I'll show you here. It kind of mm. looks like it's reading it because this is uh, this is kind of like glass. That's how right. that's how I uh, we 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 get to like change the color or, or like the, the reaction to the color of the background with this mm -hmm. effect. And that bar over there, that, that navigation bar was bothering me. Right. So I wanted to, um, and that was something uh, too that I, that I, that was happening with the overlay since right. it, it, it wasn't, it's not that it will like pop in, in into this artwork, but you are not able to disappear the, the navigation. So it was yeah. looking like kind of like weird. Right. So then in special situations, you just kind of remove it. That way yes. it doesn't conflict, right? Because you were, and this is you being also like uh, very observant of like what your preferences are. You didn't want there to be some like bleeding like color that comes through interfering with your contrast. Exactly. So I, that's just, yeah, that's and, really and that's cool. what, that's something that um, might happen a lot, that you feel that something is not, um, is not looking right, and you, you want to twist it, you want to do something different. And, and that's, uh, that's what I like from Adobe XD, that you have not one way to do uh, the, the, the things, and you can do it like mm -hmm. so many ways, that you just need to try which one is, it's going to give you the result that you're looking for. Right. Just experiment. Yes. And it's in, it's kind of up to you, right? You're the, you're the, you're, you're the designer. You get to, you get mm -hmm. to partake and do all that stuff. Yes. So let's see. Um, I just copy my, uh, my group and paste it here. And I'm going to put this over here. going to enter to the actual shape behind. Since I have this um, curve here, if I move it, uh, just dragging the, the shape, I, I might lose my lose the proportion of my mm -hmm. corners. So I like to just go into uh, the possibility just to like select the two points on the, on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And go up to here. You know, you will know that you are into the artwork because the the, the color automatically change. Right. And make it smaller. And I have all these elements here, but it doesn't matter because since this is my group, I just want to say that this is transparent. I'm going to send it back so it doesn't interfere with my navigation. And now let's see how this moves. So image, set the image. Here. We're going to tap, auto animate. Uh, this one's going to be easy in and out. And since this is a big like a uh, like tab that is like <laughs> going up, let's put eight point. 0.8 seconds and uh, just as a reminder we got six minutes until we're going to jump into the uh, creative challenge design review uh, looking at uh, anybody who has submitted challenges uh, or designs to the challenge in discord uh, so if you want something looked at like this the closer it is to the newest one is what i'll be looking at so uh, please feel free to submit your design so we can take a look at what you got Okay, and then my group, I, I put like tap 
So just to go back to the to the main uh, screen, and let's see. So we have it open. Since on this artwork I don't have the navigation, you'll see that it's not uh, interfering because on this one it just like kind of like disappear within the artwork. And then I click it and I go back and I have my navigation there. And I keep the ability of scrolling without any problem. And I can, uh, if I, I define my states in here, I have it in, in this one, I have it in this. That I have it as a component, I can start like prototyping like easier since uh, within each screen I can change like the like if you were clicking the actual, the actual font or image. So that's something that you need to uh, also make into your that, that you can also uh, have into your your grid and your scrolling the vertical scrolling and your animations you can have all this um, uh, kind of like interactions within just a uh, two or three artworks. Yeah, that's awesome. And I did that um, that um, transition for most of my my screens that I was that were common. And there is a how many time we do we have to the. We have for uh, four minutes, and then we'll design some stuff. Uh, we'll do some reviewing and then we'll come back and have like 15 more minutes for you to wrap up. Okay, let me show you this one. Is half, really we have a half hour. Oh yeah, we're good. Okay. So this one was uh, something that a friend asked me how I, I did it. And I wanted to show you here because it's just, it's so simple. What I did for my for the color step, um, this is this is a um, rectangle. I just curve the um, the the borders, and inside of this, I'm, I'm using this as a mask. Inside of this, we have uh, like a gradient, right, with the earth colors. Mm -hmm. just, I I built it on Illustrator. It's just uh, mimicking the, um, and you can see it here actually. Right. Uh, it's just uh, grabbing all the colors that we have on, on, on the tools that we use all the time. Mm -hmm. And I create this gradient. And yeah. inside of this, you have the same, in the same position, the same gradient within, now within a square shape, a mask. Mm. So if I want to change the color and say I'm going to put it here, I'm going to move the, to that part. This is a really, really cool trick. Yes. It's super, super fun because it was so simple. I was like, hmm, how I can do this? And then let's tell the, the program that my background is actually this one. So let's do a prototype here. Mm, let's do this one maybe on red. Okay, let's go to red. And then my background here. So if I prototype this, I'm going to prototype the little circle since this is the one that we're going to move. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell the program that it's going to drag uh, to get yeah, to color two, uh, easing, um, make it easy out. And then this one goes to this one, same. Duration. And this one, since we're dragging, we don't need time. It, it's actually not showing either. That is. And we have it red. And we have Look at that. There you go. 
So the beauty of, of masking, right, is is that there's a lot of things going on here, though, right? You have the the the, the potentially a drag animation if you wanted to do the drag animation. You have the uh, uh, the mask on both the, both of the slide and the square, and the color in the background. So there's there's a lot of things happening here, and and you did it in a few in a few seconds, which is awesome. <laughs> I, I think I think people would be like, whoa, like all these different things <laughs> happening on one little screen. It's really that awesome. So funny. Uh, yeah, I agree. Very, very clever. Yeah, so is we're going to uh, we're going to pause on. There is, right? <laughs> yes. So we're going to pause on, on your screens and we're going to go into uh, some design reviews and looking at uh, the creative challenge projects that people have uh, put on uh, on Discord. Uh, so there's something to give you a preview of uh, what. Uh, yeah, let me uh, give me one second and pull that screen up for you guys so you can see it. Because right now you can't. Let's see. Let's see. Is that popping? There it goes. Okay. Let's see. My screen is not sharing. I don't know what is going on. All right, there we go. It's gone. Go. Can you hear me? Technical. Very good. We're just trying to. Uh... <laughs> okay. I, for some reason, my thing is not working. Sorry for the technical difficulties here. Uh, computer decided to do some funny stuff. Uh oh. All right. There it is. Okay. We are back. Can everybody hear me and see me? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> daily creative challenge. This is what we're doing. Sorry for the technical difficulties here. My computer decided to do something funny. Uh, so we are looking at slider uh, interactions and uh, the, the emphasis is on creating a smoothie machine using sliders. So that's going to be a really cool thing to do. We're probably not going to see projects that are in that space we're probably gonna uh, see things that are submitted from the days prior. So hopping on over to our Discord channel is uh, is gonna be the place to be. So if you have submitted designs, this is where they go. Um, and if you've created things, uh, this is this is gonna be the resource for you. So let's take a look at Julie's uh, submission that just came through. Uh, thank you for showing this. Let me pull this up here. All right. So this is gonna be the journal app from day four. Let's take a look. Tracking moods, list gratitudes. Nice, we got some of that, some of that Someone micro animation. Yes. They did, right? They did yeah, the gift did, like, like you like did. The, the, the little uh, animation at the end. Let's take That's a look again. Nice. Welcome. So what kind of feedback would you give now on this? This looks like an intro screen, right? Yes, it is, uh, looks like it. It's really cool. I like it. Look, it, and, and everything moves. Uh, I can see that the that she was playing with the like the the elements and and the, and the vectors and moving through artworks because you have almost like a like a that um, page like turning mm -hmm. and, and yeah, leaving the they, screen. They had like that skeuomorphism where it looked like felt like you were there in the uh, in that project with them. Uh, so there's. This is also like really seeing live feedback. So there's people here giving feedback all the time. So, um, and, and, and Joss is the man. He's, he's always uh, very, very uh, uh, like great, gracious with his uh, feedback. So definitely use, use this resource. So this is using the, the challenge five, yes. which is like the, the journaling or a, a library. Uh, so the bookmarking, you got ratings. And, and keep in mind, like, this is something that people did, like, in, you know, like one less than a day. So I, I think for, for uh, this looks really cool on the front screen. So let's give feedback on this one. 
No, and it's, and it's really cool. Like you have the, the, the scrolling part there, like the spacing is really cool. Um, and the positioning of all the elements. Yeah, great it's job. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah, I, I think my only piece of, of critique is um, uh, using uh, the placeholder text is great for like wireframes and stuff. But if um, in this step, like I think just copy and paste something from like Wikipedia. Um, you know, as long yeah, as probably looks... no one's going to read it, but it looks yeah. better than to have just a flooding of something. Right. I think like uh, you agree, like the closer you can get for it to look real is kind of where you want to go, even if it's just a prototype for you to, to share. Um, on a network like like Behance or anywhere, this one looks look really cool. This is another one from from the the, the groups, these are scroll groups, yes. and that's what you showed, right? Scroll groups in 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 your demo. Yes. So yeah, you've contributed to this challenge. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks really good too. Uh, again, the same really good. the same it feedback. It looks like an actual app. It does. It does. I like the floating navigation. I like the icons are consistent. Uh, what else would you let's watch it again what else would you uh, uh give some feedback on here i guess uh for this one my feedback it would be that i'm not convinced of the color but this is just a, a personal um thought of the highlight icon since it's uh like mm -hmm. like darker blue in thought of uh this light one right. i guess we the 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 one of the on the background is so cute that you can mix it with another tone and it will pop like a little bit more the, right the highlight but it's yeah. just like a that's personal choice it's totally and you know you go with your instincts and i think overall this is a really 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 pleasing design uh yes, and, and it's from a ux perspective too it makes sense everything uh is, is doing what it needs to do it, it's uh it's kind of uh, following the same uh, structure of most of the, the services that are like this. Uh, again, the only thing I would do is, is put um, real text into the, uh, into the part where it's a, a book um, and the book page, because sometimes you want to like this section, like, you know, but being able to use live text is always a, a better practice, but it looks great. This one came through uh, and I was really excited to show this. So let's get this one. So this is, wow. this is an, an MP4. So, so, so people like there is video that you can, they load it up a video. Uh, so I'm not interacting with this. This is just Whoa. going. Look at that. This is amazing. That's really cool. So they're using someone's like video, uh, like 360 cam photo to kind of uh, give you that, that sense of that like feeling. that feel, right? You feel like, Okay, I could see where the potential is for something like this to be able to like, especially like, I think this is a fantastic idea just to begin with, like, yes. we, we are awesome. kind of right in this lockdown mode and not everyone's able to go to museums right now. And you, and know, you how can like, interact with each one and, and like the way it moves, like makes you like makes you feel that you're there. It's amazing. Right. What, what other uh, pieces of feedback uh, could you give uh, to this one? I really like this one. I, I can I can see. Um, and do you do you visit museums? What's your favorite museum in, in Miami to go to? Uh, there are a couple. Um, the the Paris Paris Art Museum is really mm. cool. Um, it has uh, the the frost the frost signs. Mm, it's yeah. really cool too. It, they're on the same. Um, they're kind of like next to each other, and and you feel like all that all that part like since it's like close to the bay, it's it's just magical because you start like having this amazing um, like structures uh, there, and it's really good, really really. I agree. And I, I think if you're ever in uh, in Miami and, and you have to go somewhere, you also have to go to Wynwood, right? Wynwood Walls. It's so sad because right now it, it was like so full of life. It was one of my favorite places. Yeah. Uh, Wynwood is just, you just feel like me as a designer, I just, I, I just you get want energized. To be, yes, because yeah. uh, all the colors and the design and the, the people there, the, the, the locals, like everything is like so 
clever and, and designing. And so, right now, it, yeah, it has to be like that. But yeah. everything is like super close. We'll get back. It'll come back. Yes. We'll be able to explore. Then yes. speaking of color, we have this amazing uh, uh, piece of illustration too. Uh, I like it. I really like it. I love <laughs> I think... I, I, well, illustrations. <laughs> I'll go for it. I like that that she played with emojis too. I think yeah. that's so that's something that um, I I start like seeing um, more each time, yeah. and I think it's really cool because everyone like likes emoji. Right, and and th this is like using something familiar that we understand. Like everyone now understands emojis, sometimes better than text, right? Uh, sometimes they get, you know, they can get weird with certain symbols that people use. Um, but I think with like the face is really easy to understand. So I think that is a really smart decision, uh, using something that is approachable. That's really great. So you got time for, time for another one here. Like this one, this is an MP4. All right. Whoa, this one's complex. Oh, so it's it's very similar, right, to the it's one that we saw. Similar. Nice. And, uh, yeah, that's cool. Wow. Wow. Um, so using a three D photo, and then being able to just like spin it around, uh, it simulates the, the the idea of space of, of being being there and AR kind of. I no, like and, the. And it's so cool that you can play with uh, with a picture and like give you that um, that. Uh, like kind of like a, like how people react that they start thinking like how you did this is this a video or something like that and it, you're just playing with, with shapes and, and it, yes. it it looks like a video right it, it does yes. it tricked me and i like this i'm not sure whose idea this was but i saw this is the second one i've seen it on i really like this overlay kind of uh allowing you to still see what's behind it it's 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 a good trick i think that's great look uh, the the text is good these uh these tags are good i think this is a really really cool uh really cool concept so yeah, thank everything you. is on, on the right position really cool. so going into yesterday's so yeah there's there's really cool stuff here so if let's do one more here if uh if you have any uh, uh ambition to to challenge yourself creatively uh submit some designs uh, get get your stuff on uh an xd and or start the start the challenge because there's there's so much you can learn just by like having a hands-on contextual project. So this is another uh, book, e-library, e really cool. That's really cool too, because um, it's playing with the three-dimensional part. Yeah. And if you're, uh, if you're scrolling, yeah, it, it has like kind of like a movement. You, you see that? Yeah, over. that's pretty cool. Um, I, I, I personally wouldn't, wouldn't include those photos in the background uh just to kind yeah, of yeah. like yeah they kind of maybe look at make it look a little dated but other than that it looks really great so really really great job on that ebooks uh example so so thank you for everybody that took part in uh, uh in submitting things here and to the uh discord i can i urge you to continue if you have designs that you're working on uh get them in there uh, uh andrea will do a great job at uh, giving you uh instruction and giving you um, more feedback there's tons of people here that that love to just share their knowledge. So um, submit your designs. Yeah. And so we'll get back to your screen so we could uh, wrap up uh, what you've been working on and, and give everybody a sense of closure to this uh, amazing app that you're designing. Yes. Oh. Yeah. It's a really, really great, uh, really great place to, to learn and uh, get your ideas across. Uh, so if you haven't uh, submit, use the creative challenge. That was really great. Thank you, everybody, for for uh, so for your submissions. Keep them coming, though. Okay. Um, I want to. I I guess because um, what I wanted to do instead of just uh, try to to prototype all the screens since we don't have uh, enough time, I wanted to show you like. Like the different things that I that uh, like how I I, I did, um, and what things I implement on on different screens and I copy to other ones. So you can like you you have like more or less like an idea 
how to how to play with with these uh, features. So one that I'm missing that I really like is the motion one. That at first we have this um, window that starts like uh, that comes up like the like the image or the fonts. But if we click here, I did a, a horizontal scrolling with all my um, like my options, and I um, use I use an, uh, use each one as components to give another state. So you have like this uh, click like the, the reaction to your, your click to the press uh, state. And if you go through each one, everything starts like changing. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just basically um, this same um, shape uh, for the next one, let's say uh, you click rotation, which is this one. Um, you put it uh, a little bit up and again if you do this see how your the borders like right. weird so i want just to grab right the points. points and bring it over here and then um move this up so it it, it goes with the with the animation and then for this part uh you don't need to have it on the on the previous screen Mm -hmm. because uh, it while this is moving like let me show you you can have the those options just appear and it doesn't look bad it's not like something that, that is going to look like a like a glitch it looks so great you can start from this and yeah. just add it to this the same here so i put it this one smaller and this one and this go up again so that gives you that uh like movement that you are that everything is like uh, moving inside your your your, right. your tab. So that That's was so something like really cool. Then then changing the state within your your screens. I saw when I click rotation, it came to the second state, the depressed one, and you can have it. It's, it's, it makes you like uh, this. It gives you this this feeling that is like real, like a like a real app. That looks great. And there is something else that I want to show you guys. We prepare my project. Just to post it on Behance and you guys can check it out. All the screens, uh, all the elements, you guys can, um, so can this review is it just after this uh, live. Is it live now? No, we're going to post it in a All right. few seconds. <laughs> but I wanted to um, uh, talk to you a little bit. Um, so we were, we were mentioning at uh, the beginning, um, we start creating our design system and then we can use it for a presentation. And that was exactly what I, what I did. I have all of my elements that I prepare for my design system in the exact same position with all the icons and elements in as part of my, my presentation. And it's something um, that really uh, grabbed uh, your attention. Yeah, that looks great. So I kind of like um, put all the, all the different um, screens over here. Uh, it's uh, something that's really cool. And, and I like when I see other projects is to have uh, it's not necessarily a logo, but have like the, yeah. the, the name of your project. Right. Doesn't matter how you name it, but just something that like just have it there in a, like a little overview in case that yeah. not everyone like likes to read, but there is people that likes to know a little bit more about your, about your program. Totally. Your yeah. Project. A little bit of context. Context is, is, is so crucial to what we do to be able to ground people in, into like, a little bit of background because because if they just see your screens they're just like hmm not really sure what this is or what it does but yeah, you, it looks nice but right but why so, but why right that's the that's the big question always is like why right and so you're answering that up front and then you you have taken a video and this is on your instagram yes 
And so I'm kind of like uh, reusing all um, my elements. Right. And and I just uh, I put it here in uh, Photoshop just because I wanted to kind of like make the space and see how it was going to look, even though this is just uh, an image, uh, how, how it was going to look with the whole composition. And I added um, like the links for day one and day two. So each uh, person can go through through the days in case that are interested in um, see the process. Cool, that's great. And another thing that I wanted to mention is even though I that I, I show you here uh, that I have like this um, color palette, I'm using it on my composition, but not, not in every yeah. aspect. So this this and I wanted to uh, explain to you a little bit why because I have it here since it's like the main color. I wanted to have it at like at least in some parts. But we're using uh, colors that are like so vibrant that right. if I start to using that in my composition, it it, it probably uh, is going to be messy and and, and too um, too bright for your eyes. Yeah, I you're agree. not going to be um, able to to make the difference between the, the the composition and the actual work that you're presenting. Yeah, that's a good choice. So it looks, it looks great. Uh, I wanted to uh, play with the actual color that it was like giving me this uh, blur background with and, and on reaction with the the blue uh, the the this uh, bright blue. Mm -hmm. So I picked that one just to have like a darker color, so we can um, we can tone down those those colors that are too too bright. And I need like kind of like a pastel to uh, match this one to 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 be the the, the partner in crime kind of the, yeah to yeah, this yeah. color. <laughs> it's a very complementary color. Yes. So that is important that you you evaluate like how how do you present your colors and and how to 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 give that uh, kind of like difference to your to your project. Yeah. Awesome. So let's go to Behance. And if you're not already following Andrea on Behance, this is where you can find her and the link's in the chat. So go ahead and check that out. And your portfolio is there. So also view your portfolio. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, um, I, I kind of like uh, want to post more a little bit. Well, yeah. This one was just a while ago. But I, I, I still like it. But it was at least like eight years that I did this uh, branding, and I, I don't know. I keep I keep lo loving it. But if you see uh, the the website is even like super basic. Yeah, this is you know you've grown since since then. It's always good to see like where you start, right? And it's yes. not a like it's a really great starting point. Yeah, but no, you and, all and and the important part is that, that you keep practicing and and playing around with. Uh, yeah. And you were uh, originally a graphic designer too, so that's yes. another another key. Exactly. So, you're, are you going to post this now? Yes. Let's do it. We have a few more minutes, and everyone is going to have access to this uh, to this project. Um, and maybe one day you'll release a uh, UI kit for it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I, I I think I think about it uh, not with this project. Uh, yeah. I, I, it kind of like have the time, but I, I wanted to to do something like that, especially yeah. with um, buttons and interactions, yeah. like micro interactions. Yeah. Totally. Right. There there okay. is a there is a really good website. People can go to lex letsxd.com for that. Uh, some cool stuff there. Pretty cool. I always take that. Oh, and you have the video in there too. Cool. Yes. So I, I even though I had it on on the on Photoshop with a, an image like here, right. I just have it like. Right. Then. You had a placeholder. That was placeholder. Yes. That's and cool. Here again, we have the video, and the links, and this is going live. A lot. Like that. So once you're done, also with your creative, uh, with your daily creative challenge projects, is package them up and put them in a Behance, put them on your on your portfolio so people could see uh, really, really awesome uh, 
And it was really, I think it was really amazing to meet you, Andrea, and, and thank you for, for, uh, for sharing your, your time with everybody. Uh, so if you aren't following her yet, please follow her on Twitter, on Instagram, on uh, Behance. And what's the handle? It's everywhere is... Ansiosa. Uh, the only... Ansiosa, yes. The only one that's different uh, is on Twitter, is Ann Marquez. But if you, if you type Ansiosa, you will find me because that's kind of awesome. like the, the second um, name, basically, <laughs> that well, I have. I had a great time hanging with you and everybody else in the chat for the past two days. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you for joining us. And any last words for the audience? Well, thank you so much uh, for, for being here with me. I, I know that there's a lot of people that uh, were uh, watching uh, how to create this uh, um, designs uh, yesterday and they were really excited to to animate them today so i really hope that you guys enjoyed the like the little tips and, and it, it's it will be hit, uh, i think the the important part for me is like for you to um it's helpful to learn these little tricks that are like so easy but like can change or, or upgrade your design right you know, fast and way, you know? great and everybody, please stick around for the XD Creative Challenge with Andrea. And we will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much. Thank you, Julian. Bye.